75 prime victims. Do you see Gonzalez? Yeah. They do it differently, though. They do it Mr. Tuberkin. Thank you, Your Honor. This is people of the state of Michigan versus Leticia Gonzalez, case number 2345792FH. Today is the date and time uh, scheduled for sentencing. I have provided the notice of appellate rights to opposing counsel. I do believe that there's corrections uh, that need to be made to the scoring of the guidelines and potential uh, pre sentence investigation report. Right, so let's go over these from the top. On the PRVs, PRV1 is 0, PRV2 is 0, 3 is 0. PRV4 is 0, PRV5 is 10, 6 is 0, 7 is 0, so a total of 10 points based upon three misdemeanor convictions and puts her in the C category. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, Tuberman? That's correct. Is that correct, Counsel? And I believe that the criminal history has reported uh, counts four misdemeanors, but would still stay at 10 points, okay. uh, so that would be correct. Uh, I would note this is the third PSI we've had in this case. This is the first. Uh, iteration where it contains these additional um, convictions. Uh, so, it, so long as those convictions are accurate, then yes, the scoring is accurate on the PRVs. The, for whatever reason, there were some convictions that are on the local system here on the AS400 that were not included, and they have now been included, so that's where they came from. On the OVs, OV3 is at 50, OV9 is at 10, uh, 17 is at 5, and 18 is at 10. Mr. Tuberg, is that what you're advocating for? That's what I'm advocating, Your Honor. In addition, OB 13 is currently scored 25. The people believe it should be scored zero. Zero. All right. So 75 points on the OBs. What's the defense's position? That's correct, Your Honor. Uh, a total of uh, 75 points in offense variables. Um, correct. The court did correctly um, state which which point values are, are correct there. Okay. Uh, that brings the OB to an OB level uh, six and the guideline range then for 12 to 24 months. All right, allocution or, yes, go ahead. Your Honor, um, one, one addition if I may. Sure. Um, page nine under medical history, I believe that was um, made known to the uh, pre-sentence uh, reporter um, under physical health should list. Um, excuse me, cardiomyopathy and chronic heart failure diagnosed uh, December of 2021. Thank you, and DOC's made that change, correct? Yes, sir. All right, anything else? Nothing further as it relates to the pre-sentence report. All right, allocution. Your Honor, from the people's perspective, the court is well aware of the facts and circumstances from this case. Ms. Gonzalez has been from this court in a number of different hearings. At the bottom line, Your Honor, uh, Ms. Gonzalez uh, decided to take her methadone, uh, which is a controlled substance, uh, then sought out additional methadone on the day that this occurred. She was driving home, lost control of her vehicle, and for all intents and purposes, there was no reason to lose control of her vehicle other than due to the ingestion of the methadone. Their vehicle did roll into the to pond and ultimately did cause the death of her three children. Uh, like I said, the court is well aware of the facts and circumstances of this case. There are three dead children at this point in time due to the defense's actions. Because of that, we are asking the court to take that into consideration and fashion an appropriate sentence. Does your client need to sit down for this? You may continue. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, all right. I believe that the theme here that uh, you're, you're going to hear several times is that uh, Ms. Gonzalez, she's just already serving a life sentence, and, and that's, that's, that's true. Uh, she's lost her children, and prior to this, it's not like her life was, was all that easy to begin with. Uh, and meeting with Leticia and knowing her for the, the past, well, well over a year at this point. Um, she's been processing through the stages of grief. We've seen the denial, the anger, uh, it, all of it. Um, and she's been before the court now twice to accept responsibility for, uh, for, for her actions. Uh, she's been on bond for well over a year. Um, been monitored to both the probation department as well as the community and, and um, folks that are heavily invested in, in monitoring her and making sure that she's staying on the right path here. Um, and she's had no violations. Uh, we've not had to be in front of the court for even showing the line on, on those conditions. Um, furthermore, the court has reviewed um, the memo that was submitted by the defense team 
Um, she's detoxed from all of her medically assisted therapies um, that she was using to wean herself off of the opiate ab uh, ab abuse. Um, and all parties prior to today, um, after careful consideration, we all sat down, uh, considered the case, considered the facts, considered all the, the, the factors, and we agreed that 365 days was an appropriate sentence, regardless of what philosophy you, you, you prescribe to, whether it's punishment, deterrence, um, discipline. Um, the only thing that has changed now in this case is that the charge and the guidelines now reflect um, that to be an appropriate sentence. I'd ask the court to um, sentence to a, a local jail sentence with some probation uh, to make sure that um, as she is grieving that Batista is not um, tempted to, to fall back into uh, other substances. Um, but again, as far as I've known her, um, her resolve has always been very strong. Um, that, that's not going to be an issue. Uh, but I would ask the court to um, sentence to a local sentence probation. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, have you had an adequate opportunity to read and review the pre-sentence report? Yes, sir. Any additions or corrections that you wish to make? Uh, no. Anything you would like to say before sentence is imposed? Um, yeah, I'd like to read. I've lived with survival, little survival guilt since February 17, 2022. And I continue to hate myself every day, Your Honor. But I want to apologize to my kids' family and to the community and most of all to my kids because life without them has been difficult. I just pray that they know that I'm nothing without them. And that it was just an accident. They were the reason. They were the reason that I uh, chose to change my life and I chose to never look back. And be seen in another courtroom in trouble. Um, being their mom was all I ever wanted. Each day I tried coming to terms with my reality. But my reality was just a nightmare. <laughs> that day seems to stick with me with depression and flashbacks from each and every day. I often find myself asking God why, because they're hurt. <laughs> it's indescribable. I love them so much. I love you boys to the moon and back. <laughs> Here with everything I have inside me, but Your Honor, I'm willing to accept the responsibility for my actions. Because as a mother, I feel that I have failed. But even though my life has changed, I'm asking for mercy. I'm crying out for help, help to understand that the help to understand this mentally and physically. Because I would, I would like to grieve. I'm living in pain and remorse every day. And I just want my boys to know that I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> and if I could give my life and change places, I swear I would. Life without them will never be the same, Your Honor. I lost everything I ever needed, and I hate myself so much. I've been sentenced to life without them for the rest of my life, so I'm asking for forgiveness. And also to my three boys that lost their lives, but yet here I stand still asking you for mercy. I'm willing to take the responsibility as their mother and as a mother should, but I would like, to, like my boys to know that I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart, and I hope that they can forgive me, and I hope the community and you can forgive me, Your Honor. But I will always love my boys with all of me. That's it. Thank you. Do you need a moment? Okay. No one is suggesting that anything that happened here was intentional at all.
By the same token, when the court looks at the pre-sentence investigation report, it indicates that you had obtained illicit methadone on multiple occasions from this other individual. And unfortunately, your children were in the motor vehicle when you did that. So this was not a one-time situation in which you succumbed to pressures or desires to use drugs. Rather, this seems to be a pattern, and unfortunately, your children paid the ultimate price for that. And then historically, when the court looks at your contacts with the justice system in all the arenas, uh, back in 2016, 2017, and preceding and post, you had your parental rights terminated to at least two children, or I think three now. And that was for neglect and drug use and abuse situations. So this has been a long-term pattern of placing your children at risk uh, because of drug usage. And now you have lost three. So therefore, the court does believe that a substantial sanction is warranted because this was not a one bad night situation which we have a horrific tragedy. It is the sentence of this court on the OWI causing serious injury that you turned over to the MDOC for a minimum of 24 months and a maximum of 60 months. On um, all three counts of uh, motor vehicle causing death, those are misdemeanors. The sentences will be the same, 365 days in jail credit for 71. All of these are concurrent. Must be state cause, crime, victim cause, and DNA fees that are required by statute. This is the final sentence. You may file an application to the Court of Appeals regarding your conviction and sentence. If you're unable to hire an attorney, this court will appoint one to represent you at public expense. You need to fill out the paper, keep it provided, return it within 42 days. The sentence is within guidelines, and prison has been imposed due to the reasons I have articulated.